Hello, I'm uh, Carl Nepokoski. I'm an dermatopathologist pathologist at Laboratory and Pathology Diagnostics in Naperville, Illinois. I'm here today with Dr. David Whedon, a dermatopathologist in Queensland, Australia. Uh, Dr. Whedon uh, served as um, Foundation Secretary of the Australasian uh, Dermatopathology Society in 1981. Um, he has been regularly attending uh, meetings of that society for 35 years, and he's witnessed enormous changes in the practice of dermatopathology um, uh, across the world. Um, he's the author of Weedon Skin Pathology, uh, an essential volume in any dermatopathologist library. Today we're going to be talking about America's role in global dermatopathology. Dr. Whedon. Good morning. Um, I think uh, that the role of the USA in world dermatopathology initially started as being institutionally based. There were a lot of Australians and people from other countries flocking to institutions like the Mayo Clinic and the Armed Forces Institute of Pathology. So they were probably the two pivotal institutions which guided uh, world dermatopathology at its start. And then later on, once uh, Bernard Ackerman started his regular teaching sessions, he introduced Asian uh, fellows into dermatopathology in the USA. And after that, it sort of exploded into a worldwide uh, meeting with, uh, with lots of uh, uh, meetings attended by people from all over the world and you could call it the globalisation of dermatopathology, and that really started in the late 1980s and has continued ever since. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the way that uh, dermatopathologists are trained and educated in the United States, how would you say that that um, has, uh, what differences would you say are, are, are there in the United States, and how would you say that those differences have impacted global dermpath? Well, I think the... Uh, introduction of the American Dermatopathology Society, the, the introduction of boards, etc., has certainly uh, set uh, the USA uh, on its own path, which is superior in many ways to that found in other countries. Mm. For example, in Australia, there are no boards in skin pathology. You do your path pathology boards, there are very few dermatologists that are trained in dermatopathology or even practice in dermatopathology. So they're basically pathology-based uh, personnel who then develop an interest in skin pathology. Mm -hmm. It's not like the two-streaming process that you have here. Sure. Um, and I think that applies in many countries in Europe and certainly in Southeast Asia. We have a number of Asian fellows of our college in pathology and some of those have gone in to dermatopathology uh, after they get their pathology boards. Uh, what differences do you see um, in the United States uh, versus the rest of the world in terms of um, application and use of ancillary studies in dermatopathology and how do you think that um, those differences have impacted uh, the rest of the world? Um, well, I think uh, we've always said in Australia that we're five years behind the USA and I think that probably applies in the application of special techniques, although I think with uh, the globalisation uh, that's going on, that five-year gap has probably reduced to two years, but uh, there's still no doubt that the volume of work in the USA is so much greater. I mean, Australia's population, 20 million, USA population, 10 times that. Uh, you can do a lot more here with that many people and the resources uh, than we can uh, in Australia. Dr. Whedon, how do you see uh, uh, the role of expert consultation in dramatopathology changing, particularly um, with regard to international consultation in like the digital era? Well, there are a lot of people that uh, exchange uh, material on the internet. I'm afraid I'm still computer illiterate, <laughs> uh, which prevents me from participating in those. Uh, that's one of the reasons I'm here today. I have to do a self-assessment 
program and the manual one here where glass slides are passed around uh, is suitable for Australian uh, uh, standards, but I am unable to do the computer-based uh, a self-assessment course in Australia, so <laughs> that's what brings me here today is to do self-assessment. So. Okay. Um, but uh, I mean, uh, there are a lot of people posting unknown images online and uh, putting them out for everyone. I've had some of my melanocytic lesions second guessed around the world um, by people that are interested in demoscopy, and. Uh, one of the problems with that is that you get opinions from people who aren't registrable in your own country. How much weight do you put on those sort of opinions? But it certainly improves the uh, globalisation of dermatopathology. I'm not sure that it's all um, advantageous for the patient at the end of the day sure. to have about five different opinions from people you don't know their quality, you don't know except that they've answered, they've got time to look at the internet and give an opinion on slides that are posted by um, someone else. Sure, sure. One of the problems in Australia is that um, clinicians who want a copy of their own slide mm. are sent one, so uh, they can, they're free to do anything with it, to put it up on the internet, so oh, wow. you tend to lose control yeah. of the multiple opinions that flow in, except when they give you a call and say, oh, there were two people overseas that thought that was a melanoma and not a nevus, as you called it. And uh, the medico-legal implications of that are frightening. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I have three cases uh, that have been called melanoma online, which I call benign. Mm -hmm. And I told the clinician the other day that I really didn't want to continue to do his work if he was going to post them yeah. online and uh, and get opinions that I, over which I had no control and no medico-legal control of yeah. the outcome, because there's really frightening implications Absolutely. as the uh, world becomes much more litigious. Yeah. yeah. So, Dr. Whedon, certainly, um, uh, you know. Growing up in dermatopathology, everyone has um, mentors and people that they look up to and uh, people who trained them in the field. I'm curious who your mentors were. Well, I think my main mentor was Bernard Ackerman. I probably shared him with a thousand other uh, students. Uh, he was uh, the great person in the 1980s. He commenced the globalization of dermatopathology he had numerous fellows that came in from all parts of the world and it was really a very exciting time in the 80s and 90s learning dermatopathology and having Bernie in the background to guide you and uh, put you straight if you got too big for your boots. <laughs> sure. That's great. Okay, Dr. Whedon, well, thank you for your time and your comments and uh, it's been really interesting hearing your perspective on the history and certainly the globalization of dramatic pathology. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you.